How does this bird conquer prey ten times its size? What biological weapon is this Komodo dragon hiding? How do these dive bombers prepare for battle? Discover the weapons used by serial killers in raw nature. It isn't enough just to find your prey. You need the tools to catch and kill it. Jaws and claws are familiar weapons. But some predators have developed an extraordinary arsenal to trick, stun, or poison their victims. When it comes to death, Wildlife's always inventive. Big cats are natural born killers. They've got some of the best weaponry in the animal kingdom. Sharp claws help catch the prey. Huge canines do the killing. and back teeth shear the flesh into bite-sized chunks. Each big cat deploys its jaws and claws in a different way. And one of them has an extra weapon up its sleeve. But which one? Lions are among the most successful hunters on the African plains. They have the biggest teeth and claws and hunt in gangs. Opportunists by nature, they'll take on whatever crosses their path. Even small snacks. Using a simple pincer movement, the pride separates this family of warthogs. Powerful forelegs and hooked claws seize the victim. Teamwork like this can bring down a one-ton buffalo, so a piglet makes very easy pickings. With so many lions sharing the kill, scavengers don't get a look in. But solitary cats are at risk from thieves. The leopard has an ingenious solution to this problem. Impressive claws aren't just weapons. They also allow it to hoist large kills up into trees for safe storage. And since it doesn't share its catch, it hunts less often than lions. Its claws are sheathed in skin and only released when needed, like a series of flick knives. Whilst the other cats keep their curved claws razor sharp, the cheetahs are blunt and straight like a dog's. This doesn't affect its performance. Because the claws are permanently unsheathed, unlike the other cats, they provide traction when it runs. And allow its fragile frame to accelerate and turn quickly.
But speed alone doesn't explain the cheetah's hunting success. In fact, this big cat uses a secret weapon. Its dew claw is longer and more curved than the lion's or the leopard's. First, the cheetah's superior speed gets it ahead of the game. Then, it uses its special claw to swipe at the victim and trip it up. Once it has control of the situation, it goes for the throat. Holding the windpipe shut until the victim suffocates. So, like the lion and the leopard, Jaws and claws are the weapons of choice for the cheetah. But it's the specially developed dew claw that maximizes the success of its light and speedy frame. Like the big cats, jaws and claws have also given this beast the edge. Alligators have such successful weaponry that they've hardly changed since the age of the dinosaurs. Fish stand little chance. Alligators have 80 conical teeth, shaped for grabbing and holding their victim then ripping it to shreds. Throughout its life, the alligator's teeth fall out and sharp new ones take their place. Unlike the big cat's teeth, they never wear out. So alligators' jaws are always primed to take advantage of new opportunities. Every spring, egrets come to nest at the edge of Florida's swamps. Their arrival doesn't go unobserved. Alligators have bulging eyes on top of their heads, giving them binocular vision, so they can accurately judge the distance between themselves and their potential victims. But if these giant reptiles normally catch their prey in or close to the water, isn't a bird in a tree a bit optimistic? Egrets prefer to nest high above the water in good-sized trees. When the upper roosts are full, all that remain are the low, scrubby branches, sometimes only a metre above the water. At this young age, egrets are shaky on their feet. One false step means certain death. Seeming to work as a team, the alligators use their weight to slam and shake the trees. The egret situation is precarious, but they manage to cling on. Having failed to unbalance the chicks, 
the alligator reveals the real force behind its fearsome weaponry. An alligator's tail is so powerful that it can propel this huge reptile through the water at over 20 kilometers per hour. But that's not all it can do. The alligator prepares. And with a sudden, immense flick of its tail, launches itself out of the water. stood little chance. These birds face the opposite problem to the alligators. They're in the sky, but their prey is underwater. It's a tough challenge, but it helps to use gravity as a weapon. Gannets can reach speeds of 100 kilometers per hour as they plummet from the sky. These natural dive bombers are well equipped to survive the impact of a 40 metre fall. Their legs tuck in for minimum air resistance. Just before hitting the water, they fling their wings back. Timing is critical. Pull back too early or too late, and they'd crash. But even a perfectly timed dive involves a huge blow to the head. Hitting the water from these heights is like colliding with concrete. They have extremely hard skulls to help take the knocks and come equipped with shock absorbers, special air cells between the neck and shoulders. As the gannet prepares to dive, it gulps in air and the cells inflate. Its streamlined bill is like a spear, cushioned at one end and deadly at the other. With weapons as good as a gannet's, fish are a soft target. But our next creatures have a much tougher problem to crack. The ostrich lays the strongest egg in the world. Even if a grown man stood on it, it still wouldn't break. 
These big birds have big families. When most of the eggs have hatched, they can afford to leave the ones that haven't and concentrate on their enormous new brood. Of course, these abandoned eggs are at the mercy of all the predators on the savannah. Early morning is the busiest time of day on the African plains. And one of these animals will get egg for breakfast. But which one? This jackal has picked up the scent. Its jaws are strong, but don't open wide enough. So it must give up. And the cheetah has the same problem. So it doesn't even try. A lion, however, has huge jaws. But it lacks the technique to break the tough shell. If a lion can't crack it, then you'd think nothing would stand a chance. Enter an unlikely candidate. The Egyptian vulture. Its beak looks like the obvious weapon, but it's too flexible and not nearly hard enough to break the armored eggshell. For a while, it appears hopeless. Unlikely as it may seem, this bird has worked out a solution. The vulture knows it's important to find exactly the right weapon. The stone must have very sharp edges and be dropped with precision. After half an hour, it finally breaks the tough shell and can at last enjoy the fruits of its labor. The best weapon was a quick thinking brain. The most obvious weapons aren't always the most useful. These male chameleons have awesome looking horns. They're good for wrestling bouts over territory, but rarely cause injury. So if horns aren't the chameleon's weapon of choice, how does it attack prey? Blink, and you'll miss it. The tongue shoots out at more than five meters a second. The 
The tip is pulled into a cup shape. This gives enough suction to secure the prey. The reptile has a range of nearly twice its body length. Muscles alone can't achieve this firepower. A special spring-loaded mechanism is needed. Spiral collagen fibers wrap round a bone inside the tongue and help catapult it outwards. This precision tool allows the chameleon to attack from a distance and catch prey off guard. Our next animal can do this too, but without even touching its victim. What's the secret behind the Butu dolphin's excellent hunting skills? Murky water and little beady eyes aren't a good combination if you live in the Amazon. So this dolphin doesn't rely on sight to find prey. It uses echolocation. The melon on its head is a special tool for sending and receiving sound waves. The dolphin emits high-pitched clicks which bounce off objects in its path. It receives back a three-dimensional soundscape mapping out the river's geography. The clicks also tell it where prey is. But that's not the whole story. Why aren't the fish darting away at the last moment? Once a Butu dolphin detects a target, it brings an invisible weapon into play. The stun gun. Its high density beam of sound is thought to stun and even kill fish. This technique is believed to be unique to some species of whale and dolphin. But their sonar isn't restricted to finding and killing prey. It also keeps them out of danger, warning them of the invisible fishing nets that crisscross their home. We've caught fish with nets for thousands of years, but we certainly didn't invent the technique. It's copied from a master craftsman. The web is one of the most notorious animal traps. Web-spinning spiders usually have to wait for prey to blunder into their deadly nets. But there is one of these silk weavers that doesn't leave things to chance.
Its web may look scruffy, even pitiful, but it poses a very real threat to any insect that walks below. Instead of passively waiting for prey, the spider actively seeks it out. It throws its net and catches the victim with the sticky threads. The more the prey struggles, the more it becomes entangled. With terrifying speed and efficiency, the spider wraps the insect in yet more silk. Finally, a venomous bite paralyzes the victim and starts to liquefy its tissues. Eventually, it will be sucked dry. Web building may be unique to spiders. Dealing a deadly bite isn't. Chemical warfare is the tool of choice for our next predator. Africa's Gaboon Viper. It has the longest fangs of any snake, more than five centimeters. They're hinged and fold back against the roof of the mouth. Just before striking, they're swung out and down. Rats and other small creatures are a favorite prey. So why does the Gaboon Viper need such enormous fangs? The snake's markings camouflage it amongst the leaves and dappled light. It spends much of its time motionless, waiting for prey to cross its path. But will also hunt out a meal if there's a taste in the air. Viper's highly directional scent organs pick up the rat's odor and it homes in. The snake may appear sluggish but it strikes its victim with amazing speed. The fangs are brought forward. Stabbing down deep into the rat's body. They impale the heart and flood it with poison. The venom destroys the rat's blood cells and vessels in a matter of minutes.
It seems like overkill on small prey. But there is a reason. The Gaboon Viper's venom is weak, so it needs big fangs to inject large amounts. It's quantity, not quality, that makes the snake's weapons so deadly. If fangs are a frontline method of delivering poison, another African predator brings up the rear guard. From its vice-like claws to the tip of its venom-loaded sting, the scorpion sports a stunning armory. The pincers grasp the prey, then the tail is brought over its back and used like a hypodermic syringe. Paralysis is swift. The bulbous tip contains two sacs of toxic venom, which is delivered through a hollow, needle-sharp curved spine. The scorpion's venom is potentially fatal to anything that crosses its path. But it's not after big game. It prefers insects. This cockroach doesn't realize that every step it takes creates minute seismic vibrations. Sensitive hairs on the scorpion's legs feel the shock waves and alerted to an approaching victim. Following the tremors, the scorpion stalks the prey until it's within reach. It's ambush set, it lies in wait. But something went wrong. Another nighttime hunter was on the prowl. The massive ears of this bat-eared fox also detected the cockroach and led it straight to the scorpion just as it prepared to attack. The scorpion was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The fox bites off the venomous sting very carefully. What seemed like a perfectly placed chemical weapon is actually the scorpion's Achilles heel. Stuck out on its own, it's hard to defend. 
The fox may have small teeth, but what it lacks in jaw power, it makes up for in speed. The Komodo dragon has no venom, but it's just as deadly as a viper or scorpion. So how does it kill? Is it simply a question of size? Armor-plated skin? Claws for tearing flesh? And a long, muscular tail. This creature is built like a tank. The deer are right to be anxious, but not for the reason you'd expect. Dragons don't bring down prey like lions do. They have a different approach. They prefer prey that's already dead and use their forked tongues to scent it out. Rotten, decaying flesh is the dish of choice for this giant lizard. It wastes nothing. Bones, intestines, hide, even hooves are eaten. But unlike most scavengers, Komodos don't rely on stealing meat caught by other predators. They kill the prey themselves. Their truly deadly weapon is their mouth. Each tooth harbors scraps of meat from the Komodo's last meal. Their poor dental hygiene encourages a seething mass of deadly microbes in the saliva. One nip from a Komodo sets off a time bomb of infection. The saliva will kill it in a week. The Komodo has location on its side. Its island home is only 40 kilometers long and 20 kilometers wide. So its doomed victim can't go far. Once dead, the aroma of rotting flesh draws the crowds. The muscles of the Komodo's jaws and throat allow it to swallow huge chunks of meat. The bigger the dragon, the faster it gorges. Amazingly, the Komodo's bite is not toxic to other Komodos. Dragons wounded in battle are unaffected by the otherwise deadly bacteria. The Komodo's victims are long dead by the time they are eaten. But our next predator eats prey that's still alive. Ladybirds eat aphids, and aphids can't fight back. Each beetle devours up to 75 of these sap suckers in a single day, 5,000 in a lifetime.
It's got the perfect weapons for piercing a green fly's soft, juicy body. Two pairs of long, sharp jaws. There's one pair to grasp the aphid. And a sickle-shaped pair to slice the victim through. But while it steadily munches through an entire community of aphids, it's unaware it's on someone else's menu. A ladybird's bright warning colours tell predators it's poisonous. Even predators which call its bluff stand little chance, since it can always fly away. So it appears that the ladybird has every angle covered. Or does it? This one is suffering a living death. But where's its killer? To find the murderer, we must journey back almost a month. This tiny parasitic wasp isn't interested in eating the ladybird. But she is after food for her children. Since the wasp is so small, the ladybird doesn't sense the peril it's in. The wasp's tail is doubly dangerous. It's both sting and egg tube. After implanting a single egg, the wasp departs. Oblivious to the time bomb inside it, the ladybird continues to eat. A week later, the horror begins. The egg hatches into a grub that eats its host from the inside. Once the beetle is immobilized, the lava begins to break out. It spins a cocoon of silk between the ladybird's legs. And uses the red warning color of the shell for its own protection. Finally, the young wasp emerges. It's over a month since the egg was laid. In relation to lifespan, this wasp must be one of nature's slowest assassins. The wasp kills its victim eventually. These innocent-looking birds use their weapons to torture their victims indefinitely. And whilst their beaks look harmless enough, they have a grisly function. This is a vampire a Galapagos vampire finch. It lands on the backs of larger birds, pecking relentlessly at their flesh until they bleed. These masked boobies are oblivious to the little bloodsucker that hops amongst them. Once the blood begins to flow, the vampire drinks it up.
This gruesome habit gives the finch both food and water, a real lifesaver during the driest months of the year. Adult birds can survive the vampire's onslaught, but their chicks are dangerously vulnerable. The finch prefers to keep its prey alive, though it doesn't always succeed. But there is an animal that's taking blood-sucking to another level. Vampire bats emerge from the dark caves and tree hollows in South America. Like the Butu dolphin, they find prey using echolocation. Then, special heat sensors in their nose guide them to the richest veins. Using their razor-sharp Dracula fangs, the bats make tiny triangular cuts in the skin. Their slumbering prey hardly feels a thing. The bat has another secret weapon, a special cocktail of chemicals in its saliva. An anaesthetic numbs the area and an anticoagulant stops the blood from clotting. So the blood keeps flowing while the victim dreams on. If vampire bats don't drink blood at least every other night, they die. But they're highly social and often regurgitate food for a starving neighbor. So these fearsome vampires don't just keep their victims alive, they keep each other from death's door too. Wherever you look in the natural world, there's an amazing array of armory. From the most obvious to the surprisingly subtle. From chemical injections to biological warfare. Some devices are used instinctively. Others require intelligent thought. And then there are those that keep their victims alive day after day. Surely the grisliest use of weapons in raw nature.